So, Tilo, you are one of the highlight speakers today. Al Gore, Tilo, Yay. amazing. Cool. First time in Slush. How does it feel? What do you think about it's it? It's very, very nice. I'm excited. This is very cool. And I just arrived. I got here in late last night. But it's very cool. Where are the lasers? I'm waiting for the lasers to shoot around. <laughs> I'm sure we have some laser cats uh, <laughs> all around it. So, Tilo, uh, you are in a small startup, a uh, few years old. Tell us about your, your thing and the company you represent here. Small startup, few years old. I like that. So, um, I'm with Porsche Digital. I'm the CEO of the company. And we're 100% subsidiary of Porsche AG. So, Porsche, probably familiar, uh, the car company. We make the most exciting cars that you can think of. And for those of you that have driven the cars before, I know you have, um, I think you know what I'm talking about. So we are, uh, have been around now for a year, approximately, not a couple of years, really a year only. But we're a startup because we're really starting to get more people on board and our focus is to define the strategy and vision of where Porsche needs to be in the future to stay relevant, to, to expand the success, and to think about what else we can do beyond creating these beautiful and exciting cars. And in order to do that, we're looking around the world on how to do that, and we're working with a bunch of different companies, including startups and innovators around the world, to actually accomplish the vision that we have. And it's uh, so. So you just came from Silicon Valley. Why were you there? Who did you meet? So I, I literally just came from Silicon Valley. So I'm, I'm used to a different weather. It's quite uh, a contrast, as you can imagine, here versus Silicon Valley. And we went there because we have an office there, first of all. And I actually had our CEO with me and the entire executive board to meet with a bunch of companies, including our facility that we have over there. We're just starting there as well. We have been around in Silicon Valley now since May uh, 2017, this year. And prior to that, by the way, I spent 20 years in Silicon Valley, so that, that is home for me, really. Uh, but we met with really interesting companies while we're out there and, and really interesting individuals. So we met with Apple, with Tim Cook and his executive team, with Eric Schmidt from uh, Google, uh, Jensen from NVIDIA and a couple of other guys. And it was really fascinating to actually have that kind of a dialogue with, you know, obviously the titans of Silicon Valley and then with Porsche because there's so much respect for both sides, uh, especially from these technology companies who really are excited about Porsche. Many of them drive Porsches. And it was really interesting to see that at the end of the day, you know, even though they're great innovators, we're all using the same water to cook. And that's really important to understand as well. That's a great insight, right? So they're titans and they're very innovative, yet at the same time, there's nothing holding us back or any of you back from creating as much innovation as they have done. Yeah, so to, I mean, <clears throat> this is a good point because you told me something interesting in the back there. You said we shouldn't be feel intimidated by those guys, you know, Jan Kums and, and Tim Cooks, and, yep. and you're coming from a relatively small company compared to the big guys. Absolutely. And you're, you're doing something quite radical. Uh, walk us through quickly, what is Porsche Digital doing right now and what are we going to expect in a year time? So we're looking right now into how we make the car more exciting, how we make mobility more exciting, and then the piece that I'm really, really excited about is how can we actually get into the lifestyle elements of our customers? Because if you think about it, Porsche as a brand is so successful, it stands for so much, and is so desirable by many people that you really aspire towards that brand. And that provides to us a big opportunity to think differently about, you know, especially with regards to the digital transformation that's happening in the world, not just in the automotive space, that we're tearing down the, the borders of what a product is for us and, and what industry we should be active in. So we're looking right now into how we can make your life as a Porsche customer much more exciting. And that goes hand in hand with the vision that I have, how technology will change and how the internet will change for us going forward. You know, in those 20 years I spent in the Valley, I came to the conclusion, especially over the last couple of years, that this concept of looking at an icon and clicking on it on your phone just seems to be outdated to me. It doesn't work like that anymore. We all remember this. You know, a couple of years ago, it was all about like, hey, now there are 100,000, 200, 300,000 applications in my phone ecosystem. And yet most of us only use three, five, maybe eight applications. And we want to actually go a step further. We have all the technologies available at our disposal. And now we want to look into how can I curate an experience for you? And those could be very specific things. So we're thinking about helping our customers to think about what they do on the weekend and suggest it to you. We want to actually provide you with relevant information before you even ask the question. But isn't that invading my time as well? Because isn't that as a company, you're trying to invade that real estate is really valuable to me, my own personal time? And how, how, are you gonna, how are you gonna battle that? That's the big difference, right? So I don't wanna spam anybody, but if I can provide relevant information to you that saves you time, makes it more exciting, is intelligent, and therefore aspirational, 
I think you will be open to it. It doesn't become spam, and we're not invading anything. You will welcome it. You can always turn it off if you don't need it, obviously. And we want to learn from you and to do things better. And the really exciting thing is, and that's really an encouragement for all of you, regardless of what we are doing, right now the time is ripe. You can do whatever you want. All the technologies are out there that you really need. It's not like just a couple of years ago, three, five years ago, where you didn't have the right cloud infrastructure, right network infrastructure, not the mobile device, not the sensors, and so on. Everything is there. And the only limitation that we currently have is really the creativity. And I think this next you know, step of where things will be going with regards to how information will become relevant to you um, is the next big thing that's about to happen. And in order to do that, you need a North Star that kind of directs you where that information should gather and how it finds you. And that's where brands will become so important. And by the way, I have even a term for all of this. I call it the Internet of Me which I think is much bigger than the Internet of Things or all the other things out there. It's, uh, so you just did something with Axel Springer in, in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to know about that one. And, and please be as specific as you can, because I know there's something you cannot say. But, uh, and also, how is that going to correlate to Slush? So we did something really cool with Axel Springer. And I don't know how familiar the audience is with Axel Springer. It's the largest media company in Europe. Uh, they make a lot of publications. Uh, they're very active in a lot of online businesses as well, which most people don't realize. And this is the first time ever that two companies out of two different industries, obviously us from the automotive side and them from the media side, are joining up to create an accelerator. And an accelerator for very early stage startups and innovators, people that really want to take their idea and put it into something, turn it into something successful. And we invite those companies to approach us. And there will be more information uh, published soon in terms of how to do this. We'll take them in for a 90-day program. There's a little bit of money that flows then into those companies so that they can be sustainable. But more importantly, we'll actually provide them with access to our network and our coaching. And I've done a lot of coaching with startups over those 20 years, especially in Silicon Valley, working also with the VCs. So there's follow-up uh, investment opportunity you know, discussions that we'll have. We'll provide them with a network of VCs. We'll provide them with use cases. And probably most importantly, we can actually prototype a lot of this stuff really fast because Porsche is extremely fast in all of these Exactly. Cases. So this is, this is what I want to know about. What does Porsche stand for? Porsche stands really for precision, you know, really fast. You know, we, we win races. This is real. This is not just made up stuff. We win races. That's what we're all about. That's how the company evolved. Plus, we're really open-minded. And that's something extremely important. So yes, we're an automotive company, but we do all kinds of different things already today. There's Porsche design. We make watches, you know, all kinds of other things. And we want to actually help these companies with that same spirit that we have to be as successful as we have been. And you know, this company, Porsche, still exists today based on the family Porsche. So there's a Wolfgang Porsche. He's the, the son of Ferry Porsche, who turned Porsche into what it is today. And if you meet him, you know, a person that really comes from that family and is involved in the business, that's as cool, if not cooler, than meeting you know, Larry or Sarah. Are they another. still involved in the business, the yes, Porsche family? Yep. Really? Yep. So, so and, then, and then let's move on to, to investments, because that's what people want to hear. Uh, who doesn't want to have an investment from Porsche? Imagine having that in your portfolio and going to the other investors. I mean, everybody else will follow. Are you investing? If you are, how big and why? So we're definitely investing. So everything that we do under Porsche, Porsche Digital under one roof allows us to do all these things that we need to do in order to be successful, right? From the, the strategy definition to the ideation to the prototyping to partnerships, new business models, and venturing. So that's part of what we do as well. And we have done that already since we have been around now. We invested in two companies. One of them is called Evo Park, which is a premium parking service, you know, where you just drive into the park garage, don't have to get a ticket, you don't pay for the ticket, just drive in and out, and everything else is done on the back end. How much? How much we invested? We don't talk about that. Not for this case. But then we also invested recently in a company called HomeIX, which is in the smart home environment. And again, you can already see this is obviously not automotive related directly. So it's this bigger spectrum that I talked about earlier that has to do with the digital lifestyle that we're interested in. And we're doing this with a bunch of other companies as well. So we're very open to this we work with a lot of VCs. We have relationships with corporate VCs um, and um, with uh, VC capital companies. So we're invested into eVentures, uh, Magma, uh, Grove and Israel and so on. And we're having more of these relationships. We're interested in anybody who has an idea. And I would definitely encourage you to come to our website and uh, look at ventures at Porsche.digital. Uh, and actually, you have the investment guys here at your Absolutely. booth. Absolutely. Yep. 
this gorgeous booth that they have over there is definitely worth seeing and there is the guys who's kind of who can make your life very very interesting and when you invest in the companies do they also get 911s <laughs> yes of course everybody gets no that's way a good deal. That's, a, that's a good deal <laughs> that's the goal you always have to have a goal that you're aiming yeah. for right at, at the end of the day and then we do all kinds of other things that i want to point out too so we just actually announced just a couple of minutes ago that there will be a, a competition for open innovation that will kick off in february so more information to come where developers developers can really apply and provide new ideas in terms of what can happen in the car, what can happen maybe with regards to navigation, chassis, applications, and so on. So that will be kicked off soon. And who knows, maybe there will be something to be won, like a 911, who knows? I would love to see that. So let's pick up some questions in there. Uh, what's one technology trend that you fear? I don't think I fear any technology trend. I'm very excited about technology. And I think there are quite a few people out there that are concerned, you know, especially about AI. Some of you have heard that obviously, you know, people talk about it. I'm not worried about this. Every time there's a new technology, something will happen and sure there might be some misuse of a technology, but that's just the way it is. You know, I, I wonder if this is also how, you know, the industry felt like the horse and carriage industry felt like when the automobile was invented. Because that's kind of the analogy that I see right now. And how cool is it to be part of this kind of transformation right now, think about if you would have lived back then 100 years ago, over 100 years ago, you wanted to be an innovator and disruptor. Very cool, now we can do that actually in our age and time. I like, I like, this, uh, I like this second question, is that cool? <laughs> Will Porsche become a tech company as many traditional brands have done? Are you, are you a follower or a, or a shower? No, we're a leader. We definitely want to be a leader and visionary. So I definitely believe that there will be a couple of automotive companies that will turn into technology companies. And I would love that one of those companies would be Porsche. And what is your stand for ownership versus service model? So we're actually looking into this. We just uh, launched a couple of months ago a pilot program in Atlanta in the United States, where you, which is called Porsche Passport, where you pay a monthly subscription fee and it's really on the monthly basis, you can cancel it then, um, where you actually get access to our vehicles. You can change them you know, within that month. And there are two tiers, $2,000 for one and the other one is $3,000. It's a pilot, we have to see how, how well it works and you know, if it makes sense for the end user and it makes sense for us, of course. But that's one way of how we want to get new consumer groups to become part of what Porsche is. And, and, and obviously we have to ask the, the obvious questions. How do you react to Tesla's new road, Roadster? <laughs> um, well, you know, we have a lot of respect for Tesla. I think Tesla is helping us quite a bit to really move forward in terms of electromobility. And at the same time, you know, we're going to launch in 2019 our Mission E, which is our first fully electric vehicle. And I can only say that that car that we will launch will set new benchmarks in a lot of different ways. So. Tesla, Tilo, Tilo, might be just, we need to know, give us some indication. When is it coming out, the car? Is there anything you can say? 2019. 2019. It will be very fast. Early, early or mid? Uh, late 2019. Uh, price range, just, just roughly? We haven't completely announced it yet, but it's not going to be that expensive. Uh, might be even more affordable than a Model S. Okay, Tilo Koslowski from Porsche Digital CEO. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Awesome.